And I am trying to convince this group chat it's a good idea, despite what everybody on Twitter says, to take the points with Michigan. They showed us nothing against Fresno by design. Yeah, they sucked against Fresno. Do you want them to empty the clip against Fresno State? Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Bevets protected by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sports app and use the code BEARBETS. That's Bear Bets, B-E-A-R-B-E-T-S, for new customers to get $250 in bonus bets. Chris Felica, joined again by my man, Jeff Schwartz. I'll, I will see you Thursday when we record the NFL pod, but happy to uh, be back with you. Excited to have DraftKings aboard as a uh, as a podcast sponsor. Uh, make sure you check out the uh, all the uh, the opt-ins that they have offered every day for, uh, for betters, promos and boosts and all sorts of all sorts of markets to look forward to. Certainly, uh, a wide variety of things to bet at DraftKings. So, welcome aboard, DK. Uh, happy to have you here. What took you so long, Jeff? What's going on, bud? What a great addition to the podcast, Bear. It's a fantastic sports book to to represent uh, for our podcast. So many different options. Your point. So many different options for all these games we got coming up for college football, for the NFL. You know me. I'm I'm dabbling WNBA. You're you're screaming about uh, about tennis before. We record. It's all there on the on the DraftKings uh, sportsbook app. So go check it out. Bear, I am good. I am overloaded with football. I cannot be more excited. Obviously, the, the, this is a college show. We had what Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday college football. We have a full slate of NFL come this weekend as well. Full slate of college football. So many big games. And I think the the question is, Bear, how much do we overreact, underreact, or no reaction to Week One of college football? Because there are teams that did not play well. There are teams that played over their skis. Do we change our priors on teams, right? There, there are teams I thought were going to be bad that looked better in week one. There are teams I thought were going to be good that looked bad. So I think that's the hardest part about week one to week two, Bear, right? It's figuring out, do we do, do we trust our eyes? Do we do we, do we we change our priors? And uh, that's, that's what makes this fun. Yeah, I, I think as little reaction as possible is probably the best way to go about doing this because you don't want to react one extreme to the other and be too far off and then you find yourself completely in, in a bad spot so kind of just kind of keep your keep your baseline understand what went on in the game look at the numbers what were some of the underlying circumstances that might cause you to just kind of take a step back and just think things through before you believe a, a final score uh, or, or believe a performance uh, that that might take you off of uh, what you might have as a a correct opinion going into a year, and uh, we had a lot of correct opinions last week on on the pod. Uh, my best bet of Rice was not <laughs> one of them; uh, they got annihilated. But your best bet was a winner uh, between the two of us. The things that we mentioned, yeah, uh, and gave out his bets were fourteen and seven, including the stuff that was in the uh, the gambling group chat. So uh, it was a good way yeah. to start the year for us. Hopefully, we can. Uh, have a similar type week this week, but uh, of course we are. We do want to react to some things yeah. that happened last week. And I guess we'll start with the game that you and I were kind of having fun with all summer. Um, my alumni pessimism with Miami and worried about uh, the Canes. They went to Gainesville and absolutely annihilated Florida. So I, I guess the, the big question there is, was that more about bad Florida or was that more about good Miami, or was it a little bit of both? And if you missed out on the four to one, the plus four fifty, the plus three fifty, or whatever you had uh, on Miami to win the ACC, 
are they still worth the flyer here, Jeff? Not a flyer, but they still worth the bet as now the favorites to win the ACC at plus 180. Well, I'm glad Miami won for many reasons. I, I like the coaching staff, but but I like the way they built their team bear, right? We we've talked about this in the trenches, right? They went they went heavy in high school recruiting, and these guys are mature now. You add Cam Ward and Cam Ward, and the best thing they did in that game to, to me, Bear, I watched Cam Ward play for two years at Washington State, was they eliminated sort of like the oh, no, 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 like those plays he makes from time to time. I think he had one of those throws where you're like, There were a couple yeah. of those back across yes. the body at times that had me a little Yeah, and, and so, but they, 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 and I think, look, I think the biggest thing for me in this game was that I think it's fair to say sometimes that offense gets throttled back under Mario Cristobal because they just want to run the football and be conservative. I saw a more open offense bear, right? I saw an offense more willing to let the quarterback do some things that in previous iterations of the, of his offense, now different coordinators, of course, they didn't always do that, right, Bear? So I like that. I like that the offense was more open. And I think it is a diamond on Florida as well. Florida's not very good. Uh, I think we can agree on that. They got physically dominated line of scrimmage. Miami was going over to the Florida recruits that were at the swamp, and, like trying to recruit them from, from the field after the no, game. No, 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 that's Florida's own fault. For Correct. Oh, right no, it's work. absolutely their fault. Um, but, I mean, that's how bad it was, right? That, like, that the Florida the, the, the Florida recruits are being recruited by Miami players after the game. So, look, I have Miami to win the ACC already and, and to make the playoff. We discussed this for a month straight now. So it does confirm what I thought about Miami. Now, of course, again, this is Miami's thing, right? Like this weekend, it's it's FAMU, right? Like I, I don't, there, there's not a number up on Wednesday, but especially on DraftKings, not yet. Um, I mean, they might win this game like 31-14. Like, that's, what, that's what, you know, these Oh, I'd be surprised do. if the Rattlers put 14 on Well, them. yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's going to be, so I, I'm, I love where I'm at with Miami. Look, we saw Clemson. Team struggle week one against Georgia in Atlanta. I know that from personal experience. That doesn't mean your season's over, but Clemson, the same issues they had last year, appeared week one. Florida State, 0 and 2 now, including what? Two conference losses? I'm, I'm right on that, right? They lost two two, two conference games already. Um, so Miami's in the driver's seat right now. NC State didn't look good. Virginia Tech, who was sort of the dark horse, and you know, they, they can still win the conference, but they lost to Vanderbilt on the road as a double-digit favorite, the only double-digit favorite in week one to lose outright, correct? I believe. Um, so I, I th- Rice, I think believe Rice closed did oh, Rice close under 10? Wait, uh no, and and uh, I meant I did mention Saturday because Florida State lost, of course, is a, a double-digit favorite. Just on Saturday alone, they were the only one. Um, so yeah, Bear, I think Miami is for real. Yeah, and, and I think I think you do give credit to Shannon Dawson, the offensive coordinator who I know he's got a ton of weapons now, and I know he loves uh, Elijah Arroyo, who, who is majorly involved. And if Fletcher is healthy and Demi Martinez, they, they do have a lot of players uh, to, to make some plays and get the ball on hand. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if the Canes can continue the winning ways in a couple of weeks and, they, and they get back to uh, FBS opposition. I think the other other team that made a big statement was the the game on Sunday night. In Vegas, USC getting the win. We talked about it last week. How I thought this was an under type of game, and it, it played out that way. Yeah. Uh, it's clear that Danton Lynn uh, is, was able to get this team prepared defensively with, with some new same players, new schemes. Uh, and I don't want to overreact and say this team is going to win the Big Ten, but. Could this you you look at some of yeah. these other teams in the Big Ten where we got Wisconsin who wasn't necessarily great? Uh, you, you've got Michigan who may be a little bit down now. Like like the teams that were thought to be that middle tier, maybe yeah. they're not as good. And could this ultimately be like a nine, maybe a nine and three, ten and two type team in the Big Ten in, in the Big yeah. Ten and ultimately find itself in the playoff, plus 320 still to make the playoff. Uh, you got the big game against Notre Dame at the end of the year. Like, I, I know typically you're you're down on SC, but were people maybe a little too down on SC during the season and maybe should reevaluate their opinion? I actually bet them over seven and a half wins before the year, so I feel pretty good about that right now. So I had them eight and four, Bear, and I tweeted after the game, I think they're 10 and two now. I don't know if they're a playoff team, um, but they showed some things on defense that we had not seen under Lincoln Riley in a long time, even going back to some of his Oklahoma teams. They tackled really well. 
and they were fundamentally sound. There weren't a lot of open uh, uh, grass or turf, uh, essentially, um, that LSU was able to find. But I just would caution a, a little bit, right? Like, the they're not going to have the best catch of all time to move a drive along the field right there. Like, like, USC had some things sort of go their way, and they still had to obviously win at the very end. I'm just, I, it's my only caution on, on, on USC. Now, LSU did not know what they were going to do defensively. They showed some things that are repeatable. Like Mason Cobb is, is the pressure linebacker. So, like, teams know that now. Okay, wherever 13's at, we have to ID him in pass pro. He shouldn't be a problem for the quarterback. And, and I took away, too, from this game that LSU, man, like, enough, enough pound the table, Brian Kelly, after the game. Just win, just win the freaking game, dude. Like, just win the game. And enough, enough being fake angry and, 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 and just win the freaking game. And, you know, it's little things like you're up 17-13. There's six minutes left. It's third and one. You rush up to the line of scrimmage, and you call the dumb play that everyone calls in the exact same situation. You go, you rush, you hurry up to catch USC off guard, and you run inside zone from shotgun and it gets stuffed. Everyone knows it's coming. Danton Lynn knows it's coming. The entire USC defense knew it was coming. And it's like it's just dumb coaching by LSU, right, Bear? And so um, so I came away thinking USC is better, but not like not I'm not better to, to, to make the playoff. I think there's still some deficiencies there. They're very, like a lot of teams, kind of a one deep, right? Like their one deep is very good. Um, are they going to still be all together week eight, right? Uh, depth is, a, and we like the Riley's talked about this. And to me, I'd sort of downgrade LSU. Like I just, I, 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 I was unimpressed by their offensive game plan. They didn't run the football enough. Um, so that's where I net out from that game. I think USC, to your point, Bear, you're going to cash the over seven and a half. I think I feel very comfortable in that. In Brian Kelly's former team, Notre Dame, big win at Kyle Field. Uh, it certainly looks like they're going to be favored in every game the rest of the way. Yeah. And maybe have an undefeated record going to uh, SC Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. Like, is it? Is Notre Dame to make? Would you be willing to tie up minus three seventy five or whatever the price is on Notre Dame to make the playoff? Would you be willing to tie up that much money for three months on what should be a winning wager? I would. Um, yes. I mean, we did it for Albania and in the World Cup. There, you almost <laughs> you almost screwed me there. Not World Cup, the the Euros. You almost screwed me there. Uh, but we cashed anyways at minus two eighty uh, Albania wager. Um, the only thing I will say about tying up that much money is that, like, injuries are a part of the game, right, Bear? And it's not like a, a team that, you know, if, if you lose a couple guys, you are the same team. If you, if you lose your quarterback, you say, who's a running quarterback, right? If he's out two or three weeks with some sort of injury from running the ball too much. Like, is there a, a, a loss here or there? I, I think Notre Dame is a playoff team. I picked them to be a playoff team. Their schedule dictates they're a playoff team. To me... That was a gritty, tough nose. Like, that's what you want your program to be, right? Like, that sort of win on the road. I thought a and by the way, we talked about this last week, Bear was a little overvalued anyways. I, I didn't really understand the, the hype for them. New coach. They're doing some new things. Home, they don't have a home field advantage. They don't play particularly well at home, Bear. Um, so, I don't know if I'm tied up in Notre Dame for that for that specific reason for college football in general. Like, like that's a, a number that I, I don't know if I could get there. But I do think they are making the playoffs. So if you feel strongly they are, uh, go ahead and, and lay it. Are you? Have you done it? Did, are you going to do it? Yes. Yeah. And and look for opportunities to be able to parlay these teams to make the playoff. Like you can, if, if you're in a, in, a, in a jurisdiction that allows you to parlay teams to make the playoff, uh, Georgia, Ohio State, and Notre Dame to make the playoff is a, is a pretty. Uh, Pretty uh, favorable type mm. price that I think everyone Ooh, would be. I kind of like that. Kind of comfortable with as well. And speaking of comfort, we're about to get more comfortable here. We're going to bring in our friends. The comfort level rising dramatically. <laughs> Sammy P and Will join Jeff and I for the gambling group chat. Week two gambling group chat is back. Bear bets podcast presented by Big Noon kickoff with myself, Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, and Will Hill. Uh, two ranked games this weekend. So not the, the greatest slate of ranked matchups, but certainly a lot of intriguing games. At night, obviously, we have Tennessee and NC State, and then kicking it off at noon, the big noon kickoff game, where obviously, make sure you tune into Fox at 9 a.m. Eastern on Saturday morning, three-hour edition of big noon kickoff 
getting you ready for number three, Texas, number 10, Michigan, with Gus, Joel, and Jenny. So I guess we'll start with you, Sammy. Like We've seen pretty much one-way action on the total in this game, down to 42 and a half, 42 at circus. So it probably looks like it's going to continue heading down. I wonder how much lower um, this one will go. Up to pretty much a consensus seven and a half all over DraftKings does have a seven, however. So it feels like the, maybe that might be in a situation where you might be able to get Michigan at a little bit of a, uh, a discounted price or a little bit of a better price off of their offensive woes last week. Well, you get a better number on the spread with the total going down. I mean, that seven and a half is more valuable when the total is 42 than it is at 47, 47 and a half. And not that we ever thought it was going to go through the 47 because that's just ridiculous with a Michigan team that has a very good defensive line. As for the buyback, I'm being told 41 is a buy order back. So, you know, if it were to slip to 41, hell, if it goes to 40 and a half, you're going to see people that are going to want to hit that back up because 24, 17 is going to get you over 40 and a half. And that will happen if it gets that low. I think it's going to come right around 41 and a half and then probably sit, but we shall see. I mean, clearly the big move on the under, and I am trying to convince this group chat it's a good idea, despite what everybody on Twitter says, to take the points with Michigan. Guys, they showed us nothing. They showed us nothing against Fresno by design. Yeah, they sucked against Fresno. Do you want them to empty the clip against Fresno State? It ain't going to happen. They are saving whatever offense they have. I'm not saying they're going to come out and throw for 300 yards, but you might see some flea flickers in this game. Wide receiver, reverse pass. The number I made, my power rating, is Texas three and a half, maybe four. Kenny White is Texas minus one. The fact that it's gone through seven is just too much for me, so I took the points. Yeah, you're certainly paying a tax if you're betting Texas, uh, especially at this number. I like the under still at 42, 40 and a half to me. And I, I think it's correlated too. If you like the Michigan side, you probably like the under to me. Um, we, we don't give out a lot of parlays, but that's one where that that's a correlated parlay. And parlays, if they're correlated, are pretty good because Michigan, in order to, to hang in this game, it's got to slow the game down, just reduce it as much as possible, run the ball, run the clock, hope to steal a possession. Uh, one way or another with, with a turnover or something like that on a short field and just grind out this game. This is a game where if I think, you know, I think if they get down, whatever, 14 to three, 10 to nothing, I, I'd probably live bet Texas even at a worse number, just because I don't know that Michigan can play catch up. Um, I'm with Sammy though. I, I lean towards Michigan. I like the under I, 42 is probably the last place I'd play it because like you said, 24, 17 is a very, you know, possible final score. Maybe you just go Michigan team total under, but to me, Michigan has to grind this game to a halt, just run the ball, slow it down and, uh, you know, try to reduce the game as much as possible. Jeff. Yeah. G G Jeff, Michigan team total mm -hmm. under was the way I was leaning here. Uh, I saw a 19 and a half, I believe it was at DraftKings and uh, the good thing is you can kind of adjust your team yeah. total price if you want to if you want to pay a little bit extra juice and get it to 20 that way you bring 20 in as a potential push option you can do that but uh but 19 and a half seems to be the consensus number on Michigan's team total and I, I would be surprised if they uh if they did hit 20 Jeff Sammy I'm with you buddy I took Michigan plus seven and a half you put that tweet out you text us uh, I'm with you here. Look, I, I didn't watch much of that game live because unfortunately my team was struggling with an FCS opponent at the same time. And I kind of was focused on that instead of watching all the games at the same time. Uh, but I went back and watched Michigan's film. And I thought based off social media reaction, that it would be just a disaster over the place. And it wasn't. It looked like an offense that had a new quarterback and basically replacing an entire offensive line. 4,200 snaps they replaced uh, from, from last season. And they were working through it guys, right? They're, they're figuring out what the offense is going to be. And we know that teams make a lot of improvement from week one to week two. We're going to see that here. And I think, look, Texas's defensive line was not the same as they were last season, even last weekend, right? The, 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 the run stuff rate wasn't as good. Zero sacks against Colorado state, zero sacks. So I, there's a possibility that Michigan can do what they do, right? Run the football, protect the football, hit some big play action passes. And then obviously defensively, they have to limit explosive plays, right? And so we know they can do that. They're, 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 they're supremely talented on that side of the ball. So I, I make this a low scoring game to Sammy's point. I like the seven and a half here. It's, it's a major overreaction, a four point move off of a week one game with a brand new offense. Uh, I'll take Michigan here. Yeah. And it seems like that's a theme for this weekend. And I'm curious how you guys feel. 
I mean, is it a blanket statement for kind of an overreaction? Because we thought that Florida State uh, may be a little bit of an overreaction, that move with Boston College down to 15 and a half, 16, 16 and a half off of 21 and a half or whatever it was. And then the money was right because the Florida State Seminoles were terrible on Monday night and they're 0-2. And, and that move and that reaction slash overreaction had a tendency to be right. We, we've seen that in a couple of other games uh, now as well. We, you've got uh, Nebraska over a touchdown. You've got Oregon being, being bet down. People loving Boise State. I mean, there are other games out there that – it, it seems like the, the the market has kind of moved in the uh, kind of hot takeish kind of reaction where uh, a very public side is being created. Uh, Sam, does this provide? Uh, obviously, you're on Michigan, so I know in that particular case, uh, you think that's correct. But in in a game like like Boise, Oregon, where I think the number was somewhere around what what you have, 24 it was 24 like that, yeah 24 and, and yeah. now it's down to what 18 and a half or so around there like like is this does this mean like Oregon is, is an auto play for you Sammy you're just going to kind of take it on a uh, a case-by-case basis every overreaction is created differently I'm actually looking more at the total in the Oregon game Oregon's going to score but Boise's going to score too I mean with Gene T at running back that kid is a monster so I'm looking over 61 haven't bet it yet I'm waiting for some limits to go up but another overreaction that I want to talk about is 397, 398. That's Utah State, USC. Look ahead number in the summer was about 22. Look ahead number heading into the weekend was 24. And now we're at 29. So we are through four full <laughs> touchdowns. And look, they had a hell of a win. But it's also a shorter week for USC now. There's film on Miller Moss, who somebody on social called the next Joe Burrow, and <laughs> USC the next yeah. LSU, and yeah, you're right. like, all right. Well, someone we said is he better is than USC Caleb Williams. Good enough to win it all. You're like, holy cow, they won one football game. Um, the Braves. They also, they also don't really have the incentive to run it up against Utah State, where you're going to see a Utah State team that is going to try everything in its power to keep this game close. So. That would be a line I want no part of on the favorite side. Hell, I might get a 30. I might get a 31. I'm in no rush to take Utah State, but your best point to bet USC was before it crossed their 28. Anything after that is just extra nuts on the Sunday for Utah State. Yeah, and if it were as simple as just bet on the overreactions, bet against the overreactions, we, we'd all just you know sit here and make a lot of money. Like Sammy said, all reactions are created differently because it's that push and pull between betters in the books of like, hey, it's just one game. Yeah, but it's also 100% of the games we have to go by. It's 100% of the data points. So um, you don't want to overreact, but you don't want to just completely ignore what your eyes are telling you either. So it's not just as simple as one or the other. Boston College, Florida State. Uh, being a good example. And I know it's a game we'll get to. The one I do think is a little bit of an overreaction is NC State now going through the key number and getting the eight. Uh, I would expect Tennessee to win the game, but that's an NC State team where you have a lot of respect for that coaching staff. And I, I know Tennessee probably moved the ball here, but to me, you're, that, that's one where at least you're going through a key number. And uh, I, I think that one might be a little too many points. I think that I don't think that number is done climbing yet. It, it wouldn't surprise me if that ultimately hit nine because I think. Uh, with the, the hype train around Tennessee and how great their offense looked. It's a pretty simple offense for a young quarterback to come in and grasp against an NC State team that struggled in the opener against the FCS team. Like I don't think that's done climbing. If you if you like Tennessee, I obviously would not wait, and I'd bet that now. But uh, if you like NC State, like I think a few of us here on this particular podcast probably do, I would kind of wait this out, Jeff. I think I think you have to wait it out, right? Uh, look, we saw a team struggle with FCS opponents, and if you're a good team, a top 25 team, you come back to next week and you play better, right? You, you just there's a pride factor in that, right? And with NC State, with Oregon, now they play opponents that can score and put up points as well. But you're going to see a better performance. These are not. These are not the, they're not Florida State, in my opinion. There's, there's many reasons for that. Uh, but I think we see a renewed performance and uh, energy from NC State that we did not see last weekend. Look, Tennessee can score a ton of points. They always score a ton of points. Uh, they continue to score a ton of points. But to Will's point, like NC State is a good football team and they're going to have pride in this game. So your point is right. I wait, was it eight right now? You said, I mean, Sammy, does this get to, to eight and a half, nine, ten? It probably does get to ten, right? Nine and a half is the, the highest it goes. All right, this is probably where it's going to stay. I mean, DraftKings is showing you an eight right now. Eight and a half, nine are dead numbers, especially in college football, where you usually see touchdowns uh, from the better teams. 
It could get back down maybe to seven and a half across the board. I don't think it's going to go to seven, though, guys. This is probably a fair place to say between seven and a half and eight. But you know that people are going to have Tennessee wheeled in their money line parlays. Tennessee is going to be a very popular leg for the books. And, you know, the sports books are going to want Tennessee to go down. I don't think they get their wish, but uh, they would love an NC State outright win for sure. I, I think another game that's probably going to be wheeled in a lot of these uh, money line parlays as well is Nebraska against Colorado. Nebraska, seven and a half is what DraftKings is showing right now. Uh, I worry about the Huskers, though, in this spot. I would not be surprised at all to see Colorado go into Lincoln and pull this upset. This is the type of game that Nebraska hasn't won in years. Everything surrounding the program now is rose-colored glasses. Uh, they beat a bad UTEP team. Dylan Raiola looked great. You win this game, and you could be 7-0 and going to Ohio State later in the year. But I'm not sold on that defense still. It's not like their late-season defensive improvement last year and this game against UTEP really tells me anything. They faced some horrible offenses late last year, and we know that Colorado, if they can do nothing else, it is move the ball. We know Horn, Hunter, and Sanders are going to have monster days. And if you go back and look, I don't, I, I know yardage wise, they did give up like 450 or whatever it was against North Dakota State in the uh, in the opener. You had what 75 of it on that late drive that kind of got the backdoor touchdown before they inexplicably got the ball back. They held uh, North Dakota State to a couple of short field goals down in the red zone. So I don't think their defensive performance was as bad as maybe people thought it might be. So I I like uh, Colorado plus seven and a half here. I would not surprise me at all if they happened to go into Lincoln and won this game outright either, Jeff. I think you're crazy, but we'll we'll talk about more of that in a few minutes. Um, I Colorado looked at the exact same team they were last year in offense, right? Look, if you're going to go on the road and not try to run the ball at all, which they didn't try to do in week one, and maybe they decided to hold that back, um, you become one-dimensional. When you play uh, one-dimensional football on the road against a capable defense, we could argue whether or not they're good or very good or bad, whatever, but they're, they're capable. They have a good defensive line. It's hard to move the football. Like you, you need to show me some more balance. You have five new offensive linemen, guys. Five new offensive linemen, including a true freshman left tackle who did play well last week on the road for the first time in Lincoln, Nebraska. How many times are we wagering on a team with a brand new offensive line going on the road? Uh, very rarely, right? Like so, I, I think a lot of things are sort of against Colorado in here. Mainly, what I discussed, which is the trench play. I, I think I, I think Nebraska has the edge in the situation. And again, we go back to this, right? Year two, Matt Rule teams continue to improve. They looked much better, obviously, than last season in week one. Colorado, to me, will look like the exact same team as we saw last year. Very top-heavy, top of the board, Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders and, and maybe Horn, and then just sort of dudes everywhere else. Yeah, they are who we thought they were, to quote the uh, the late, great Denny Green. And Bears just being a typical Colorado homo, pick, picking Colorado hey, here. See you. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I sat here, Up in the I, Rockies. I sat here last week and picked against Colorado. I thought North Dakota State had a chance to win. By the way, all of our upset, you know, underdog with a chance to win. I, I'm, I'm you know, joking aside, I forget who Bear picked. I know Jeff picked Stanford, who covered and could have won, didn't. Sammy picked Florida Atlantic, who was in the game, and I picked North Dakota State. So we all covered. None of us actually got home. I'm trying to think of who Bear picked. That. I'm drawing a blank. But uh, I picked against Colorado last week. I picked under five and a half wins. I'm totally with Bear. I like the points here. I just think the back door will be open if they're down 10 or 14 late with that passing game. Uh, they could certainly, you know, score and get within the number. You need the seven and a half, and there's still some seven and a halfs out there, at least at the time we're recording. I just think that passing game is enough. They've got pros, and, uh, you know, they're an over team, too. They, they certainly are an over. I don't, I don't know if you want to sit there and watch a Colorado game with an under ticket because they can score, and I don't know well how well they can stop you. But to me, like Bear said, I wouldn't be surprised. Tie game five, six minutes to go. Nebraska's a little tight. Uh, th those points look a little much, and I, I thought it's six and a half, like the local headline in the summer. I thought that was a little high. So, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly on Colorado here, plus seven and a half. Go, Dion. Let me give Paul Stone some credit. Great handicapper in college football. He posted this. He posted this the other day. Since Dion took over, the underdog in Colorado games is ten and three ATS. Good one. And this is a role reversal for Colorado. They're not laying ten or eleven, guys. Now they're catching over a touchdown. It's a different game, and. 
Look, we can have fun with Colorado. We can joke about Colorado. I heard Bear was crushed when he found out he wasn't going to Colorado for the first three games of Big Noon kickoff this year. <laughs> Maybe that's a bad rumor, but my numbers don't lie. And it's this simple. I've got Colorado at a 113 and Nebraska at a 110. So on a neutral, I've got Colorado three points better. And I promise you, Bear, home field is not worth 10 in Lincoln. It's no. just not. No, this is no longer... Uh... Grant Wistrom and Terrell Farley and Lawrence Phillips and Tommy Frazier running wild in the in the mid nineties. Not at all. Will to answer your question, I, I piggyback on Sammy last week when he said FAU. I said I was okay. literally just about to say FAU, so we landed on the same same ugly. By the way, how oh. ugly was that game to have oh. to watch sitting there holding an FAU ticket, knowing that they could have won the game or they could have been blown out, and ultimately, yeah. I, Yes, the right thing happened in Michigan State, won a close, ugly game. But uh, I'm just glad we got there. Sammy, don't you worry. If you and I are, are, are right here, there's a good chance the big noon kickoff could be in Boulder on the 21st. So we, we are all in for Colorado this week. To Field trip. Road. So we can, we can get you out and – you're not allowed to run on the field with Ralph. No. It's, 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 <laughs> even even Dion Dion wasn't allowed to like. Dion Dion wasn't allowed we can to touch him you, either. We can get you on the field, hopefully for that game. Come on out. We can get download some apps in the state of Colorado. Make some arbitrage, and we'll and we'll, and we'll be all set there. It'll be be a, be well worth your time making the trip out. So oh, yeah. teased it earlier. A game to maybe look at, and, and you hit it on already. Uh, Sammy was Boise, Oregon. Jeff, I'm just gonna let you just just go. I'm not I'm not touching this game. Um, so y'all can bet however you, you want. Obviously, the, the the number dropped a lot. I mean, there are some concerns I have with some personnel uh on the offensive line and linebacker that, that showed itself against Idaho. Look, Oregon gained 500 yards, had had 31 first downs. Uh, our right tackle basically cost us 14 points in the first half with a with a strip sack, which he didn't give up a sack all season. He plays at NAIA transfer, and we allow. I mean, just we just played bad. We played with these moments where, you know, if you clean those moments up, then you end up scoring a lot more points. I am the one thing I'm concerned about. Legitimately, there's two things in this game. One is our linebacker depth. Um, I'm not worried about our defensive line against Boise State's r rushing attack. Our guys played well. They're big. They're strong. I'm not worried about that. Our linebacker depth. And then Dylan Gabriel's got to throw the ball down, down the field, guys. Like, the lack of explosive plays wasn't because they weren't there. He just didn't throw the ball down the field. We had running back trip over the, the 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 turf monster. Got him two or three times with with open holes. So uh, I'm staying away from this game, guys. It's at 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, it's a late night game. Uh, I'm just going to sit home and watch it. And uh, I got no money on it. The other game, which I, I think is one of the headliner games this week, Iowa State, Iowa. Uh, Iowa is a three point favorite, I believe, over at DraftKings right now. I know there are some two and a halves out there, but I believe. Uh, DK did hang a three on there. I don't know if that's moved since I last checked. Nope. Uh, DK still has a Iowa I, three minus one Oh five actually. So, uh, if you like the Hawkeyes, um, or if you like the, the, the clones rather, you can get that full field goal at DK. And, and I do, I think there's a bit of an overreaction here to the Iowa offense. People are, Oh, the Iowa offense is, is solved their woes. I'm not so sure. That game against Illinois State last week was three was six nothing at halftime, based on a couple of field goals, and you saw the the jokes continuing about Iowa's offense. It is what it is, and then finally in the fourth quarter they scored twenty one points on an FCS team to, to 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 get up forty to nothing and win that game. This is a much better defense that they're going to be facing uh, in, in Iowa State. Uh, John Hickok's team is always difficult to move the ball on these are usually lower scoring games i think the team that we've seen from iowa state late last year they again you talk about a team um that didn't show anything uh sammy last week with, with michigan against fresno state i don't think iowa state showed much offensively i think iowa state if they're the team that i expect them to be this year i think they go to kinnick and win how are we betting the over or a better question <laughs> Why are we betting the over at 35? I mean, I looked at the team total for Iowa State, 16 and a half. That's not a lot of points, but it's also just under that 17, which is a big common number. 
in college football. So I was thinking I'm either going to take the under 35 in the game or the Iowa State under uh, 16 and a half. I've got the game 20 to 14. So I guess I lean under Cyclone 16 and a half. But uh, this is one of those games, unfortunately, if you're betting anything under there's not much wiggle room. If you get a block punt or a pick six, that's probably enough to get it over 35, you know? I like under. I, I know Iowa is now the greatest show on turf, and they're going to be airing it out. I just think that in a rivalry game, probably be a little tighter, a little more conservative, get back to their nature. And I think this is one where you look up and it's like, man, under 35, that's not that many points. It's hard to stay under 35, but you look up in the early second quarter and it's like 3 nothing, somebody in 6-3 middle of the second quarter. I still think there's a little meat on the bone where you play the under 35. I'm looking at Iowa State's game last weekend. They played North Dakota, not not uh, North Dakota State. 18 first downs on offense, 353 yards on offense, not great. 86 yards rushing, like, and now they're going to go into Iowa and put up any sort of points whatsoever. Uh, so I think you guys are on the right track here with the under. Uh, I watched Iowa, unfortunately, that entire game because I had money on them. They ended up covering, which was nice. Uh, but the offense in the first half was was a hard watch. It did get better in the second half. They sort of figured things out. They actually let Cade McNamara throw the ball. That was nice of them to move him in the pocket a little bit, take, take some shots down the field. So maybe they unlocked a little bit more of that offense. But to everyone's point here, it's not good enough to wager them minus the three um, or the over. Like the Iowa is what they are. If, if they hit the over, then then great. And we lose a wager, I guess. I'm, I don't have anything on this game at, at the moment, but I think neither team scores. Bear Remember Sam. when, go ahead. No, do you guys have anything? Because Iowa State got banged up a little bit. I know three or four starters in and out of the game. Do you, do you guys have any? If I couldn't get anything definitive on these Iowa State guys that left the game uh, on Saturday. I, I, I do, do not as of right now, but I probably have it in that I can find some things out. So it's tough well, to get information out of there. It's tough to go in Iowa State and get information. Thanks. That coach doesn't say anything. So, Bear, if you let us know or if you find out, light up the group chat. Um, oh, yeah. Iowa's offense, remember when Bobby Valentine got ejected from that game years ago and he came back with the glasses and the muscles? Yes. <laughs> That's Iowa's offense. It's the same thing. It's still Bobby Valentine. I, I, I will I will say, I, I'll defend reference. them a tiny bit on that. They they did structurally look a little bit different. It, it doesn't mean that they're actually going to score more points this season, but they attempted to do things differently, especially in the second half of that game. I think people are sleeping a little bit on Iowa's offense. I don't think they're going to be the best in the country, but I don't think they're going to average 13 points a game or 50 points a game, whatever it was last season. I'm not sure this is the game to prove everyone that, that their offense is quote-unquote back, but I think they'll be in the 20s at least this season, which is not a lot, but better than last year. Sammy and Will, I just want to throw a couple of other games at you that, that I saw, and, and I guess Jeff too, but we can – we can kick that around afterwards, just just you and I, if you like. Syracuse getting three at home against Georgia Tech. Like, are we kind of reassessing Georgia Tech maybe a little bit after we saw how bad Florida State was on Monday night? Does maybe that do upset maybe get knocked down a couple of notches, and they're going to be facing a team that can throw the ball now with McCord and, and Gadsden? Like, I don't know if I'd want to be laying three on the road with Georgia Tech. That was the first one. Uh, Houston as a 30-point underdog against Oklahoma. Like, I don't know if anybody really dove into the uh, the Oklahoma Temple box score, but Jackson Arnold had 17 completions for 145 yards. The Sooners had 378 yards against potentially the worst team in the FBS. Uh, Jaleel Farouk is out for a lengthy period of time now. The defense got six turnovers, but can you count on that week in and week out? I mean, the, the Houston defense did a decent job against UNLV, and I know that's a different offense here, but I just trust Willie Fritz, I think, to maybe keep this game close. That was game two that I thought was a little interesting, and game three was Kentucky. Uh, I bet this earlier at nine and a half. It's 10 now, so I, 10 I think is still a play. I bet Kentucky minus 10 against South Carolina. South Carolina's two touchdown drives last week against Old Dominion, three yards, six yards. They looked terrible on offense. I don't want to overreact to that performance, but I don't know how much improvement you're going to see week one, week two with Sellers at quarterback against Mark Stoops' defense there in Lexington. So those were uh, those were three games. I was just curious if, if anyone uh, had particular thoughts on the three sides that I kind of liked there, Houston, 
and uh, Kentucky. I think I like Cuse the best out of those three. I, I like Fritz as a coach. I just don't like that team. I think I'm under when I get under four wins and watching them against UNLV. I'm feeling pretty good. By the way, UNLV is pretty good. That coach is really good. That was an impressive, uh, impressive performance by UNLV. And the market, I don't know if you guys paid attention to the line, but the market hated UNLV. That was just kept going towards Houston, 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 and UNLV absolutely smoked them. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth. UNLV, a team to keep an eye on. So uh, I, I think I like the Cuse one for, for all the reasons you mentioned, probably the best out of those. And I'll throw another game. I don't know if you guys wanted to uh, to get to it, Sammy. Notre Dame off a big win against an SEC team, a physical game, uh, biggest win in a while, you know, and that was, boy, they went over the team total in a painful way, but <laughs> now you're a four touchdown favorite. Everyone patting you on the back. Hey, congratulations. You're going to go undefeated. You're going to go in the playoff. Couldn't you see them coming out a little sleepy this week? And that game is, you know, 10, seven middle of the second quarter. And they just kind of sleepwalk uh, against the Northern Illinois team who well, look, it was a cupcake uh, game last week for them, but 700 yards of offense. They've got some skill guys to me. That's just a sleepy spot where I like the 28 with uh, Northern Illinois. Illinois. Yeah, that's come off 32. I mean, this was yeah. 30 earlier in the week. Pinnacle's down to 28. So the Sharpies agree with you against Notre Dame. Let's see. Can I remember everything Bear asked? I have nothing on Kentucky. I've got Cuse as a small favorite. And I get what we're getting at with Houston. Will laid it out really well, I thought. Great coach, bad team. It's year one for him coming from Tulane, Willie Fritz. That'll be a team that I want to take and put in my back pocket and bet them a lot in conference. I, I get that Oklahoma didn't look great, but Oklahoma didn't have to look great. I mean, when you play Temple, Bears' favorite bet under two and a half wins, <laughs> Temple is unbelievably bad. I mean, they couldn't need – I'm surprised they get out of bed and don't roll an ankle at Temple. That's how <laughs> bad it is. But Houston will be a team – I don't want to bet this week, but we're going to get some big numbers with them in conference play. They're going to be catching 14, 17, 21 quite a bit, I believe, during conference play. I would rather wait for those moments than try and get in front of Oklahoma because Oklahoma might be better in week two offensively. And if Oklahoma is better offensively, they could win 70 to 21. And then we're like, wow, what a great bet out of Houston. Will, you mentioned Tulane and Willie Fritz's old team. It's a little bit of a theme in the Big 12 this week where I think there are a couple of live underdogs in three spots in the but Big yeah. 12 where we could potentially see an upset. K-State goes to Tulane. I love John Summerall, the guy who replaced Willie Fritz. They went to Manhattan a couple of years ago and won. I don't know if I want to be laying double digits here in, in New Orleans with, with K-State on the road against Tulane. Illinois does not look like a great team offensively. The KU crushed them last year. It's five and a half right now. Maybe if that touches six, I could be interested in Illinois. And then Arizona State laying six and a half against Mississippi State. No ASU looked great in the opener against a really bad Wyoming team. But you got Jeff Levy now in Starkville. He's got his old quarterback, Blake Chapin, uh, it, it, from Baylor with him. Should ASU be that big of a favorite, Jeff? Was ASU's offensive performance this weekend the most surprising thing of the entire weekend? I did not see that coming. We, we've talked, Bear, about ASU going under this season because we didn't think they were a talented team and they were going through some portal issues and trying to figure out who they were offensively, defensively. I like Kenny Dillingham, but that to me was the most surprising. was just single sort of performance of the weekend. What was it, 40, 48 points? Was that 48 points this weekend? I know Wyoming doesn't play well from behind, and they're replacing a bunch, a new coach as well, but um, it does feel like a slight overreaction. Look, you you have to figure out it's a hard part about week one to week two, right? What's real? What's not? Do you change your priors, right? If, if you think Arizona State was going to be bad this season, do your priors change, guys, because of one week? I, I would say no. I think that happens after maybe three or four weeks. So I would lean toward uh, Mississippi State here. But I was I was shocked by that performance by the Sun Devils offense. Yeah, I think my favorite of those bunch is is Illinois. Uh, I think that five and a half is a lot. And I still like I I love Leopold as a coach, but you know you lose Colt to Nicky and you kind of got a glimpse and a pick you nailed Bear of Penn State. I know you had to wait a while to catch that ticket uh, <laughs> last week in Morgantown, but you got a glimpse of what Colt and Nicky can do for Penn State. So I worry uh, about Kansas going forward. I still think it's a good coaching staff, but something to keep in mind. And look, you always have the. Uh, concern with the quarterback, that back in, that back issue, that back injury can pop up at any time. So Illinois plus five and a half. Haven't quite got there. Haven't quite bet it, but that, that'd certainly be the way I would be uh, be looking, Sammy. 
Yeah, I wrote a couple of things down from the Kansas game, and I, I appreciate those of you in my mentions talking smack when we moved the total five <laughs> points and it lost. <laughs> it was like the only loss I had all weekend, and people are still like, nice pick, nerd. And you're like, all right, 58 and a half to 64, doesn't win. Uh, I wrote down two things about Kansas. Colton Nicky, which Will already talked about, looked awesome calling plays for Penn State, and and they look damn good. Granted, they're going to get to the playoff and get pounded by somebody. But the other thing I wrote was being greater than Daniels, question mark. And I think the narrative that I had built in my own head was wait until Daniels gets back in control in control of this offense. It will get better. You watch Jason Bean last year and you see what Jason Bean did this year in the preseason. Maybe the offense is going to move faster with him under center or will or did whatever. Whatever I'm trying to say is maybe they're not going to be as quick as I thought they were going to be. So, look, it was nice to move that number. It was also nice to get Penn State. I mean, we had four of us talked about betting Penn State last week, and that was that was fun. I mean, they beat the snot out of West Virginia. It wasn't really that close. Weird start to that game, too. Total, total rock. Yeah, the, 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 the fumbles on consecutive plays and – yeah, yeah, the bad, the bad spot on fourth down where they where they gave West Virginia the first down. You're like, oh crap, here we go. We're gonna go into the locker room. And it's gonna be be tight now. And then you got the pay PI call on the other end that wasn't called PI. So it, it worked out, but it, it, none of that ultimately mattered. Penn State was light years better than than West Virginia. And I'm I'm glad we. But you're right, Sammy. All, all I heard was, wasn't Rice your best bet? Yeah, it was, and they got their ass kicked. But what, what, what about Penn State? What about the under in the, the Clemson-Georgia game? What, what about FAU? Like, you, you don't hear about those. You hear about, what, what number are we moving this week in the FCS? Yes. We are waiting for LSU Nichols to open. Um, that's probably my favorite total. I mean, how many points is LSU going to score? They could score 70 if they want to. So the number I think is going to open, uh, again, it's tougher to do these on Wednesdays now when we tape, but this is uh, – <laughs> I know Jeff likes the lottery number, so I will read it. 308945. That is Nichols State and LSU. I think it's going to come 5455. And if that's the case, it will go over, at least in terms of the money. Um, I mean, LSU can win this game 63 to nothing if they so want to. And I think you get a good spot because they just lost on national television. They're not good enough to make the playoff. They can't hang in the SEC. Nussmeyer's a bum. And they will correct all of that stuff against poor little Nickel State, and uh, they could go over fifty-four by themselves, no doubt. So we anxiously await a number being being hung on LSU Nickel State, and and the see what people are giving you shit about that they don't get is you are telling them this is what's going to happen. The number is going to move, so you bet it, and then you bet it back at the high point. That's what happened with me. I bet it. I bet it at 58 and a half on the opener. Like we said, I got what 64, 64 and a half at kick. So I got six points of a potential middle. And if I lose a hundred bucks or whatever the big's going to be fine, I'll, I'll take that chance every time. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm still a loser. No matter what happens. That's why I, I agree learned with that. On the internet. That is true though. That part is true. <laughs> yeah, that part, yeah, we, we, true. we learned something else about Sammy this week, by the way. Yes. Teacher. Oh yes. I know. He snuck that Professor in too. He said, one, of my, one of my former students. I said, what, Am I on hallucinogen? What do you mean, former student? What are you <laughs> teaching kindergarten? Sammy P teaching kindergarten. What, what is that story? Yeah, we used to color outside the lines, <laughs> not inside the lines. And I, I used to eat the paste too. I would just eat all the Elmer's paste. I taught broadcasting school for a few years in Chicago, and I still have right. some students who send me their gambling opinions. And I think it's a good thing you're not gambling for a living, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I, I, I keep in touch with some of the kids. One of them's a really good hockey better. Um, he was all over a couple teams last year at the right prices, like Arizona plus plus one eighty, plus 200 a couple times. So uh, you never know where you're going to get good info from. That's for yeah. sure. And sometimes it's from your former students. We love it. Well, hopefully everyone got some good info here from the gambling group chat. Hopefully we have a, uh, another good week and uh, continue to put some money in people's pockets. Appreciate it, guys. Talk to you soon. All right, back from the gambling group chat. A lot of disagreement there, Bear, more than more than usual. I feel like we're, we're pretty much aligned, but I'm on the other side of, of you guys on a lot of these wagers. I hope I'm right. And that kind of leads me into my, my fate of the week. This is a spot that I have eyed from the beginning. You, you know sports books like DraftKings put up numbers for, for sort of key games throughout the summer. 
And this one I've, I've eyed for a while. It's now it's seven and a half, guys. Look, Colorado, to me, is in a bad spot in this game with one specific matchup. I liked them last week to cover against North Dakota State. I liked certain things I saw. They, they, they didn't end up covering, but they have five new offensive linemen playing together. That five new offensive linemen are going on the road right now to Lincoln, Nebraska, to a good defensive line, Nebraska, and a good solid defense. Are they the best defense of all time? No. You have a true freshman left tackle who played well last week, going on the road for his first start. We saw the offense last week, not really attempt to run the football. I think they had a tight end in on one single play of the entire game. If you're one-dimensional on the road against Nebraska, I don't care how good Travis Hunter is and Shadur is, and they're, they're elite talents, Bear, right? They're, they're good. If you're one-dimensional on the road, five new guys for the first time in a hostile environment, it's going to be tough. And Shadur got hit too much in that game. I didn't like some of the game management concerns I had. So to me, I'm just, I'm wagering against the situation for Colorado here. I think it's going to be rough for the offense, rougher than we think. I think Nebraska can score enough on, on their side of the ball. And so Bear, I'm against everyone. I get it. I'm against everyone here. Yep. Um, I'll take Nebraska minus a seven and a half. Hey, some, sometimes it's good to be the, uh, the, the lone voice on, on a game. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I certainly think you will not be the lone voice throughout the country. I, I think, a majority of people will be on uh, the, the Huskers here, but why is this we, number we, not moved then? I'm surprised because it, look, I I I don't know if any sharp groups have hit Colorado yet. I haven't seen that, and maybe they have. But this, the look ahead was like six and a half. It's now seven and a half. I don't, I don't know any sharp groups that have hit, had have had a big Nebraska either. Yeah, I think so I think like, neither side. I'm curious where this number is going to move. I, I, do we agree before kickoff, or say seven and a half? I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. I don't know. I think I think seven seven and a half is going to be pretty. Uh, I I don't I don't think it's going to move much because I I think you're probably getting good two way action on this because I I don't think you want to. It's not going to go under seven seven. No, and a half. no, no. That that that's for sure. No, I don't think so as well. You think they do? Then people will come in and just buy it back. But I think I'd be I'd, I'd be curious. To, I don't think this will. I don't think it'll. I think seven seven and a half is where we're going to wind up. I mean. Most of the most of the bets that have come in right now have it on Nebraska, yeah. but I, I don't. I haven't seen any real wagers made, so we'll see. I feel like our group. I like the buffs. Our, our, Sammy likes the buffs. Will, likes, Will the likes the buffs. We, we you you should just go to the you should just go to the book of bear, and we can just eliminate the vigorous. Just just have just a nice nice yeah. straight even money bet just, with both sides. Even money. We we could discuss. I feel like the gambling group chat will be lively on Saturday night as that game is uh, is going well, on until. Oregon plays Boise State, and then I just stopped talking to you guys as I as I hunker down at, at 10 p.m. Eastern there. All right, Bear, it's time for our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Where are you going for your best bet this weekend? Yeah, I, I kind of hinted at it in the uh, the gambling group chat. I took Iowa State plus the three against Iowa. I'm a big believer in this team. Uh, I am not necessarily a believer. But the Iowa offense has all their woes fixed. Uh, I think the Iowa State defense is going to give – the Hawkeyes, a ton of fits. So I took Iowa State plus three, and I certainly would uh, be interested in taking a little little nibble of them on the uh, the money line as well. Um, yeah, I, I like the under in this game. We we talked about this already. Um, I, I I again, I will say though, I think people are are, are being a little. The Iowa offense was was a little better, bear a, a little bit better, a, a little better. It wasn't great. It's a little bit better. The second half was 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 a lot better than it was the first half. Uh, but look, in a lower scoring game. The, the the points are with are you, so you're not concerned at all about Iowa State's offense in Week One. You think that was just sort of like no boring and no I'm not I I think that was more more not showing a heck of a lot in, in that game and just keeping things in pocket. I, I and uh, I would expect I would expect Beck and and then Beck in that group to uh, to play a heck of a lot better. All right, my best bet for this weekend is going to San Jose State plus six and a half bear at Air Force. Air Force returns just 28% of production from last season, the lowest in all of college football. And when the teams don't return a lot of production, they tend to have a steep drop-off in play. Air Force is used to this. They, they, they've had this over the years. and the years they've had it, they haven't been good. They played uh, Merrimack, Merrimack this weekend, Bear. 230, 231 yards in offense. That's it, and 21 points. Like They're sort of you know feeling sort of that that, uh, that, that returning production issue. San Jose State, new coach, Ken Niamatololo, the winningest coach in Navy history. He has run this offense for years. Not at San Jose State now, but at Navy. He knows what Air Force is going to run. San Jose State started slow against Sac State. They came back and they won that game in the second half, 42-24. Give me the Spartans here. I think they went outright bare. 
I'll take the six and a half against the Air Force team that's brand new. Brand new all over the field. I think San Jose State has the advantage here and a coach, again, that knows how to defend this type of, of option offense. Give me the Spartans here on the road against Air Force. Yeah, I, I think the Kenny and Batololo uh, factor is, is, is pretty big there as well. So I, I like your angle there. I like your cap, and uh, and, and we'll see if San Jose State can, can keep that within the numbers. Certainly, uh, the Spartans have not been the, the team that they were a couple of years prior uh, last year as well, kind of struggle, yeah. but uh, getting points, um, I, I could get behind you there. So that, that's all for this week. Uh, I think we covered a lot of uh, a lot of ground. Hopefully, we can pick up some more winners this week. Uh, thanks again to DraftKings for uh, joining in on the fun. Thanks to Sammy and Will for the gambling group chat. Uh, appreciate all of you for uh, listening, following us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Bear, Bo- Bear Bets YouTube channel as well. And again, thanks for all your comments. Ch- chime in on Twitter, even though, even if you're gonna, even if you're gonna berate Sammy and I, and g- give give us brief about Lindenwood and, and Rice. We love the interaction. <laughs> it shows you care. It shows you're listening. It shows you're uh, you're paying attention. So, Jeff, for Sammy, for Will, I'm Bear. Less you bet, more you lose when you win. Yes, sir. Panthers plus four. Gotta, gotta love All it. All right.